was a gross, thick darkness. I couldn't see my hands before me. And it felt like millions of worms crawling all over my flesh. And I started screaming, God, where are you? Where are you, God? Where are you? And I started screaming, no, no, God. What's the death angel here for? Go away, go away. No, God, what's the death angel here for? And all these thousands of souls was trying to climb up through that gulf. But the only way through that gulf was the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that I took so lightly in my life kept going back into sin. It was my only way through that dark valley of death. Isn't it great that he's alive? And now, he's a now God. Beautiful message, honey. Beautiful message. Wasn't that great? God knows what he's doing. I was saved at 11 years old. I invited the Lord in my life. And then at the age of 15, I spirit filled. And then I fell in love like most of us do and was married. And the day that we were married was the last day that my husband come to church with me. So for a year I tried to hang in there, but slowly I went out to the world because I didn't think I could give his love up. Oh, okay. For recording purposes. Oh, all right. Where we are. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's better yet. Thank you, Jesus. And so over the period of 10 years and two children that was growing up on me, I found myself an alcoholic. Drugs, heavy, alcohol, cigarettes. I begged my husband, when are we going back to church? He'd always say to me, the day you go back, I'll leave you. So I kept drinking heavier and heavier. At the age of 28 years old, my baby brother and my dad was working on my home this day, and God just stopped my heart. I had a heart seizure. I let out a scream, and my brother heard me. He ran in and scooped me up off of the kitchen floor, threw me in his truck, and rushed me to the doctor's office. I had no breath, but with the cry of my heart, I looked up to God. I said, God, if you'll set me free of drugs, alcohol, and cigarettes, and give me back my breath, I'll live for you the rest of my life. I said, even if he leaves me, God, I'll answer the call that you placed upon me. I said, I'll get on the housetops and preach your word. I'll go through the streets proclaiming your name. And God heard that cry. By the time I got to the doctors, I was breathing. He gave me a shot and sent me home. And the husband left me like he said he would. And over the period of 10 years of loneliness, praying that God would bring him back to me. And if he didn't bring him back, asking God to give me a Christian husband. And it didn't look like he was going to. So I started making excuses to myself. I'd have to go old all alone. I needed someone to help me raise my children and be with me. And so one more time, I thought I could set God up on a shelf in my life again. And I headed back to the world of drugs and alcohol, searching for a husband. I found one. He told me he'd love me as a Christian woman and would go to church with me. But as soon as we were married, he wanted no part of my God or my church that I loved. So I found myself going from bar to bar, the calling of God tugging harder and harder at my life. And each time that we go back into sin, we go seven times worse. 
And when the devil gets us possessed, when he totally gets control of your life, then your open field. He can send all the demons of hell in upon you. So the next leading demon that moved in was suicide. It started riding my mind night and day. I had been such a failure in my life. I couldn't even live a godly life, a Christian walk in this world. And then I'd fail my babies when I should have been instilling Jesus in their little hearts. I was in the bars drinking. I failed as a wife. The three things I wanted to accomplish more than anything else. So with a whiskey bottle in one of my hands, I thought I was a strong woman. I could set that bottle down. I could pick it up at my own will. Not the third time that I picked it up. There was no way I could set it back down. It took three or four shots of whiskey to get me going in the morning, carrying my bottle to work with me, sleeping pills and alcohol to put me to sleep at night. I was so afraid that I was going to die in that condition, and I knew God's word enough to know where I would be. So with the whiskey ball in one of my hands, sleeping pills in the other, I made two attempts on trying to destroy my life. One week before my accident, I ran by my mama's house. When I went in the door, mama went to weeping. She said, Aline, look at you. You're looking so old and so worn. She said, when are you going to give your life back to God? Let him work out your heartache and your sorrow for you. I looked at my mama. I said, oh, mama, I won't mind hell. I said, you tell me one thing that the flames and the devil could do to me that my life on this earth hasn't been. I said, I've lived one heartache and one pain my entire life. I said, he could not possibly touch my soul. But from the time that I was saved at 11 years old, I had a longing in my heart to look upon the face of my Lord and Savior someday. So I mockingly said to Mama, if there is a heaven, and if there is a hell, my hell would be to be separated from my God that I've loved so much. And I ran out the door crying on my way to work. Mama got on her knees like she always did. She raised us seven children most of the time in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas. She said, God, you heard her words. She's not afraid of death or hell. Said somehow, turn her back around, set her free, and put the fear of God back in her heart and show her a portion of her hell. One week later, fell asleep at the wheel. My car went over the cliff and my body flew out and I went down a large tree. I've had my neck broken, four major breaks to my spine, 15 fractures on top of the five major breaks, nine broken ribs, crushed lung, and crushed kidneys. My body grew to be two or three hundred pounds in a couple of hours. I was in a bruised trauma. We have five units of blood in our entire body. I had four units of loose blood hanging loose in my back. My mama's phone rang at 12 o'clock this night. And this little person on the phone said, Sister Baxley, or Mother Baxley as she's called, will you pray for a little mother? Her son was just killed in a car accident. But when mother hung up her phone, God spoke to her, said, you pray and travail for this one like you never prayed before. Before this night's over, you're going to need someone to help you pray for one of yours. So mama prayed so long, she was so weak, she crawled back to the bed and no more laid down. The phone rang and it, I was at the hospital. 
she immediately called my sister in Sacramento and my sister started praying for me and God gave her a vision in this vision I'm back like a small baby again and God wraps me in a swollen cloth and he hands me back to my mother in the meantime mama ran to the hospital and two doctors met her at the door and told her my only hope was from a miracle from a higher power and mama happened to know that higher power I had one of my oldest brother was give up to die he was dying with high fever all of his scalp was rotted off all of his little bones coming through and the doctor came by horseback in the Mozart mountain he came in and said he'll be dead within 30 minutes an hour my mama did not know God but a voice spoke to her to pray so she said she ran to the woods and fell by an old black log and they heard her in the cotton fields for miles travailing and crying out to God till a cloud appeared over her head and something pulled her head up and out of that cloud this mighty voice of God said he's healed mama went to shouting oh and laughing hallelujah running to the house my grandfather says someone catch her she's gone crazy she's gone crazy but the exact moment the cloud spoke his heel my brother came out of a death coma and asked for mama and a drink of water so when doctor says they can do no more when man says it's impossible I cannot live that's when my mama gets a hold of God the word impossible turns her own she ran back home my sister called and shared the vision she said mama I sure don't understand this vision but be strong in faith maybe we will someday but in the meantime little ones I found myself walking in the valley of the shadow of death and what God calls outer outer darkness there's no words in our human vocabulary that can touch that spiritual darkness out there of the spiritual world it was a gross thick darkness I couldn't see my hands before me and it felt like millions of worms crawling all over my flesh and I started screaming God where are you where are you God where are you and oh, I'd always loved the 23rd Psalms. And I started quoting, yeah, though I walk through this valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> and I couldn't go. I couldn't finish that scripture. This word would comfort me. I stood there with sin in my life undone to meet that almighty God up there and all of a sudden in the right hand corner appeared this mighty death angel and I started screaming no no God what's a death angel here for go away go away no God what's the death angel here for the death angel appeared that on the command of the father he would have to crucify the spirit of life Jesus all over fresh within me he had a set of gold keys on his waist and he carries that gift of life back to God the father the giver of life then the death angel carried me out to the pits of hell and when I was left in hell the death angel could not abide in that presence of hell he had to totally pull away and I was begging him don't leave me don't leave me here don't leave me he totally disappeared I could no longer feel the overshadowing of the death angel's wing and here were souls around me by the millions screaming hollering gnashing of their teeth 
ripping of the flesh. And I had four friends when I was in the bar life doing drugs and alcohol. They were on the way to San Francisco and they were in a convertible. They went under a semi-truck trailer. All four of their heads was decapitated. And some of these souls that was around me was the souls of my, my friends. And I was screaming, God, God, where are you? Where are you? You read the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man's soul is still out there. He's been out there hundreds of years still crying out to Father Abraham to send Lazarus to dip the tick of my tongue with cool water. And here was this dark, deep gulf separating me from my God up there. And the only way through that gulf was through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that I took so lightly in my life kept trampling upon the greatest gift that God could give to humanity. I screamed out, where's the devil at? I personally wanted to kick him in his teeth for my life I'd had on this earth. And way back up in the background of me began that mocking, laughing voice, the devil, hoping God would command the death angel to take Jesus from me. He says, I'm married to the backslider. He says, if you make your bed in hell, I'm there. And Jesus went all the way to the pits of hell for me. And the devil was hoping the death angel would come back in and separate us and leave me in hell forever. And all of a sudden, this almighty earthquaking voice began shaking all hell. And demons by the millions started their irky, horrible sounds of trillions of eyes all around me. And all oh, the souls was crying out in desperation, ripping of the flesh. And as this voice started coming on the scene, the earth started moving and quaking under me and oh God says Aline you were right not to fear him the devil if I let him kill you in the death the first death even rip the flesh off of your bones he said you fear me I'm the God that can destroy both your body and your soul he said I own hell and I had to cast these souls here then he showed me another department of hell. The mighty lake of fire and brimstone. And hell was enlarging. Hot lava was bubbling up from all heaven and hell and earth and eternity. Red hot transparent flames. But those flames gave no light. Now both fires, the fires on this earth, can consume our flesh the first day. The spiritual fires of hell can consume the flesh. But neither fire can consume the soul. It's the only thing destined to live beyond this life. And oh, it's the soul is the judgment of God. There's two deaths that we have to face. The first death, the death of the flesh, we think everything's over with. There'll be no more pain. But oh, we just begin to live when we die the first death. The soul has been destined to live. So it's the second death. Where is my soul going to live for all eternity? Heaven or hell? And hell was enlarging. God says, wide is the road that leadeth to hell and destruction. And many, many there be that go thereat. But he said, narrow is the path that leadeth unto me and life everlasting. And few there be that find it. But he said, I did not create that lake of fire. And he showed me the lake again. And the angels are in the chains. Their big gold loop chains around their wings had their head bound to the pit and it gave no light. It was in gross darkness, even with the hot lava and the flame. It was still in this gross 
gross, gross darkness. God said, I did not create that pit, Ali, for the soul of man. I created heaven for you. I created it for the devil and his angels. And he said, if I have to cast you there on judgment day, it will be your own choice, your own will that will take you to that lake of fire. And as I wade in and out of the valley of death, they had to cut my throat, drill four holes in my head, put me in a halo cast that weighed 25 pounds and locked on my hips. So my only way of communing with my mama when I would come out of the coma state, I would scribble, pray, mama, I can't die, I can't die. She saved all my notes. One of my notes, I'd been to hell already. And I scribbled, Mama, you may have to shout this to the world. There is a hell. There is a lake of fire. And oh, pray, Mama, if I die, I'll be left in hell for all eternity. And I was begging, Mama, pray, pray, Mama. And oh, as I wade in that dark, dark valley, one day just opposite from the gross darkness, oh, began penetrating this almighty, oh, Mighty, illuminated, holy, righteous light. And the light was so pure and holy. I wasn't fit to even look up to that light. I grabbed my face, covering my eyes. I fell on the ground. And that light was going through every fiber of my flesh. And I was taking my nails, trying to dig myself into the dirt, trying to hide from that almighty light. And here for the second time began penetrating my ears that almighty voice of God again. And all God would say to me is, Aline, your gifts and calling of me are with out repentance. That scripture always troubled me. I didn't know what gift that the Father was not going to take back and repent over. And I was afraid that when he placed the call of God upon her life, it's exactly what it says. You can find it in Romans 11, 29. I realized the gift. The gift the death angel came to take from me. The precious gift of everlasting life. Once we pick up Jesus in our lives, the Father will not repent of giving his son to you. He'll not take it back. He holds us accounted with where we go and what we do with that precious gift of life in our lives. Then you can walk in hell where I have and you can run to the four corners of the world and you'll not get away from the calling of God. You have been called, chosen, and predestined from the very womb of your mother. You didn't stumble in a building somewhere and pick up Jesus accidentally. You've been chosen to have this everlasting gift, Jesus Christ, in your life. Hallelujah. 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 And as I wait in the valley of death, oh, hallelujah, my crushed lung, it began swelling on me. And just as my lung, my left lung, the crushed lung, my right lung deflated, and I did not breathe. Four minutes, the hospital called my baby brother's home and told him to get the hospital. They were afraid they were going to lose me. And the little therapist that was over me, he shared with me later. He said, I was a therapist that was on your lungs and you died for four minutes. No oxygen hit your brain. He said, I took your blood reading at that four minute and your blood, I was giving you 100% oxygen down into that lung, but not 1% oxygen was showing in your bloodline. It was black as your hair. Absolutely no life at all. He said, one more minute, I would have legally had to pronounce you dead five minutes for California. And he said, I've been a Christian 15 years and I've never heard the audible voice of God. 
And as I took that reading, knowing I had one minute to get you breathing, said God said to me in an audible voice, she's a chosen vessel. He said I screamed out, Jesus, and give you one more shot of oxygen and the old right lung begin responding and you started breathing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And my brother shared with me later. He said, sis, I ran in just the four minutes you were dying. He said, you rushed out and you grabbed my hand and your eyes was locked on my eyes. But he said, you weren't seeing me. He said, you saw something there in death that I've never seen such a horrible look on a person's face in all my life. I couldn't even tell that you were my sister laying there. And he said, I could not watch you. And I almost had to break your fingers to get your hand out of mine. And I ran out of the room and fell right in front of the hospital desk screaming, God, don't take her. Don't take her till she's ready to die. But how I knew I was dying. There appeared in the heavens a beautiful scroll. And that same Jesus that loved me so much and wouldn't leave me in that dark pitless valley went all the way to hell with me. He had to take his hand and begin rolling my life out. And there, in a matter of seconds, everything I'd ever done went before me. And the hand, the word that the hand of the Lord began the writing across my life, I was never so shocked and horrified in my entire life. It took me three months locked in my bedroom, bawling and squalling, and I knew as I walked that floor that I had to shout to the world how God judged my life. And I thought it was the hardest thing, and it still is, the hardest thing that I've ever had to do in my life. The word that I termed as love for my husband. The mighty finger of Jesus began writing in capital letters the letter L U L S T lost the gross my life. I saw this screaming no God no that's not my judgment no God that's not me that's not me I just as my last breath was leaving me, I was screaming, God, forgive me. Have mercy, have mercy. Forgive me. The next thing I remember, oh, I was totally separated from Jesus. He wasn't there. Total separation from my Lord that had walked in my life from 11 years old. And God let me witness and feel and see my own deliverance. I found myself back in the spiritual wound of my mother. I was back like a substance again. Total gross darkness but I was a substance in the spiritual womb of my mother. She was kneeling at an altar. My sister was kneeling at a cross from her. And my sister started praying so hard for my soul, she started turning to a skeleton. Her flesh started consuming. A doctor tells us there's just a hair between death and life of a mother as she births her children and were birthed in heaven the same way the baby's birthed here in the flesh. It's encaged in a placenta of blood. It's surrounded with a bag of water. So we break the blood, the water, and God breathes the breath of life in our lungs, and we become a living soul. 
So it is with the spiritual birthing. Someone has prayed for you. Someone's prayed the spiritual labor pains for you to be saved and have this everlasting life. My sister, I could not feel her pains. I could only see how hard she is crying out for my soul. But while I'm just the substance, here for the third time began that almighty voice of God again. And God said, Aline, before you were here in this belly, I foreknew you. I called and ordained you from the foundation of the world. And as I couldn't repent of the call that I placed upon my only son's life, I'll not repent of the call that I placed on men and women's lives. And I saw this big golden book and the pages were sealed. And God said the ending was established from the beginning. And what I've ordained in the heaven will be. And one more time that voice shook my ear and I will not repent. All of a sudden the life and the light of Jesus began penetrating Mama's spiritual womb coming to this substance. Jesus was coming back to me and I started breathing and moving and mama started having spiritual labor pain and I started growing maturing into a small babe again soon I come to a nine months mature babe the tongues of the Holy Spirit was rolling in me again the life and the light of Jesus was back in my life and oh hallelujah and as mama bear down on that last defying pain, she too started turning to a skeleton. She took a cup of death there to birth me and give me life. And that pain was so severe it moved me in my mother's womb, positioned my little head up to the opening of her birth canal. And the pain started from the bottom of my little feet, shot clear through my body, and pushed my head through the birth canal. The bones was a crushing and the blood was gushing. But as I broke her birth canal, God was saying to me, preach my word, my word, my word. Every word will be held accounted for on judgment day. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Now four minutes I didn't breathe and I died. No oxygen hit my brain. So I was in a state of insanity. I was so wild I kept ripping out my blood feeding off from the lung machine. They had me strapped, the hands and the feet to the bed. I was like a raging animal. The third day of insanity, they was going to take a brain scan to see if they'd been damaged. But the exact moment I broke my mother's spiritual womb and God telling me I had to preach his word, I came to my right night and tongues of the Holy Spirit was coming up out of the pipe into the lung machine and the machine was making all kinds of funny noises and this word Jesus was back alive in me and it was leaping and I was coming up and down up and down bolted with that 25 pound bolt cast into the second layer of my skull the cast weighing 25 pounds the word was live and leaping and the machine making noises the little nurse ran over to see what was happening to me and she saw I was in my right mind she went running from the duct she said she touched my foot and a shot of electricity just carried her through that intensive care she swung the door mama standing out there waiting to be let in she looked in and saw me a leaping and the machine making noises she ran in and grabbed the back of my cast was swinging on to me trying to calm me down to see what was happening with me and when the word Jesus quieted down and stopped leaping, I motioned for Mama to give me my pencil on paper. I had something to say. I said, Mama, I was back like a small babe again. Back through your spiritual womb. When Mama saw the babe on that note, she almost had her rapture out of the hospital ceiling. She remembered the vision my sister had 18 days before 
me a small babe. I said, Mama, I experienced a re spiritual rebirth. I've been through the blood and the water and the spirit of Jesus Christ. I said, he's forgiven me of all my sin and I'm ready now to die. I said, the death angel can carry me home to my Lord. I said, give my children my love and kiss Papa for you and I'll see you, Mama dear, when you get to heaven. I handed her the note, closed my eyes. I said, Lord, I, I'm ready now for you to come after me. And here was God's voice back on the love side. I'd known from a child. And he didn't add gifts this time. He gave me back that precious gift of life back in my heart. But he said, little one, your calling is still without repentance. I still had to get up and do what God had predestined for me to do. And I was so dumb and unlearned. My sister was a mighty preacher. My baby brother was a mighty preacher. I couldn't believe that God was going to make me get in a pulpit. I could help them in their meetings. But God says, Aline, everywhere you put the sole of your feet, it'll be your inheritance, not your sisters, not your baby brothers, but your own inheritance. We each have a spiritual inheritance to claim. We each have to come into spiritual sonship, walk into that spiritual courtroom of heaven and say, I'm that son. I've come to claim my own inheritance. You and you alone have to claim it. Then one more time, the Lord rolled out my life and my scroll again. And there for the third time in this old alcoholic's life, the precious blood of Jesus started rolling across my scroll. And the finger of the Lord appeared, and in that blood, in capital letters, began writing the word G-R-A-C-E. Grace across my life. All the bricks, they said my body was crushed like a fly under a fly swatter. But all the breaks in my body, number 15, number 9, and number 1, meant judgment from God. But in the midst of all the breaks and all the crushing, there was the big five major breaks up and down the spine. The number of grace that the Lord wrote across my life. Hallelujah. They took me off of all support machines, moved me out of intensive care. I went home the very next morning. I was only in the hospital 18 days all total. God is a miracle working God. And when God places a cloud, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want to share just a little bit of the scriptures. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our lives are reproaching to the Lord. The scripture says, let everything that just nameth the name to depart for iniquity. Me sitting on a bar stool, trying to share Jesus with another alcoholic sitting there with me. I brought more reproach on his name than I did good. So God wants our lives to be walked a holy, godly walk in the Lord. To be a true witness of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must pick up our cross and let our fleshly old Adam die away that the new Adam, Jesus Christ, becomes the whole part of our life and our calling. If you put the calling of God first and Jesus first, then he'll give you that one that he's ordained to have with you, to walk with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go to Revelations 20 and 6. It says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Jesus is the first resurrection. He was the first to come out of the grave. And because he arose, we arose. 
and through his blood we won victory over death hell and the grave he gives us a choice here and this is why Jesus the main reason he came he preached more on the subject of hell than any other subject he knew he came to die upon Calvary to shed his precious blood that he could heal man the relationship between man and God again and restore to us back to God the Father that created us and put us in the garden of Eden so we're sealed in Jesus Christ you're sealed in the first resurrection through his blood covering you have been sealed in that first resurrection revelations 20 and 12 says and I saw the dead small and great stand before God the books was open another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to the works and I'd done a lot of good works in my life I love people I've given and shared but all oh, when I hit the valley of death I was found wanting and I was weighed in that valley oh it was, seemed to me was eternity wait there I was hung up there all oh, the good that I done in my life it was going to be abolished and wiped away I was found with sin in my life when I hit that mighty valley of death out there and all my good works would not count and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and underline these next two words and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them this scripture always was a fuzz to me too I couldn't understand if the lake of fire was the only hell how death and hell was already out there to be delivered up stand before the white throne judgment and then cast to the lake of fire those that's in a death sentence out there is the poor old sinner that came in darkness and went out in the same never to know the light of Jesus Christ but to those that's in a hell experience out there is a backslider that's been translated out of the dark into the illuminating light of Jesus Christ and oh if that light is turned back to the grossness how thick and how eternal the four minutes I died God answered my mama's prayer and I named my own hell when I was separated from Jesus that was my life from 11 years old my spiritual soul flipped into a spiritual hell a spiritual fire you could not kindle in heaven hell and earth that can touch the soul of a man or woman that's had that life gift, gift embedded within their soul and for that to be taken back out and turn you back to the total gross darkness of the spiritual world out there I name my hell my hell would be separation from my Jesus that I loved so much. And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Get your eyes, young people, on the second death. The greatest decision you'll ever have to make in your life. It's not what Bible college you want to go to, or what kind of possession profession you want position in this world is where your soul is going to live eternity and he gives us the choice heaven or hell and he shed his blood he had never been separated from his father from all the foundation of the world but just as Jesus gave up the ghost there he screamed out father father why has thou forsaken me he took that total separation that you and I would never ever have to be separated from God our Creator what a gift that God would give to the world the gift that I took so lightly in my own life hallelujah hallelujah get your eyes on where your soul the second death is the judgment that God pronounces upon the soul where it's going to live for all eternity nothing in your life is more important than securing your soul through the blood of Jesus Christ 
What a gift that he gave to the world. Psalms, Proverbs 1 and 23, and I'm going to close. He says, turn ye at my reproof. God will speak this scripture to me a million times, sitting on the bar stool, and all the, the tugging at my heart would be there. He kept saying, turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. I wasn't worthy for God to bring me back from hell. I don't know why he'd give an old drunkard 40 years old another chance to pick up my cross and follow the Lord. But oh, this one thing I do know that oh, just the presence of the Lord, oh, the awesome power of God in our lives that we can have when we total commit our young lives. God needs you now, you. God needs you now, not not when you get old, your generation's dying out there on drugs and alcohol and suicide. God needs you now to live that godly life, to be that ensign to the dying world out there that's all around us. Hallelujah. Don't keep running. Don't keep running from the call of God because there will be a day that he'll stop knocking and tugging at your heart. There is a place. He loves us. He's a God of love. Or I wouldn't be standing here today. He's a God of love. And his wrath, he gave me mercy. Hallelujah. But he's also can turn to the God of wrath when he has to judge you in the end and cast your soul to the lake of fire with the devil and his angels. America youth, we have no excuse. I believe we've heard the story of Jesus from a little bitty person. America will stand before God with no excuse. We've heard the word of God time and time again. It says, but you have said it not. All my counsel would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear come. I've had big women and men and women say, I'll not fear when I hit that valley. Oh, you don't even know what's coming out of your mouth. And you don't know what fear is. You may have been in fearful things here in your life as I had, but all oh, to hit that dark valley of death, undone to face that almighty God. The word of the Lord says, ever knee bow. Every tongue will confess and cry out. The biggest of men will be crying out when they hit that valley of death. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish, anguish come upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have an opportunity tonight. We have an opportunity tonight to receive this gift of life, eternity. Don't keep running. There'll be a day that His grace will end on your life. I ran and ran, and I'm a firm believer that if I ever turned my back upon God again, if I ever went back into the world of sin, I would seal my doom, that lake of fire, with the devil and his angels for all eternity. Not even my mama could touch God for my soul. The last drop of blood has been applied to my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I left millions of souls in hell and I wasn't worthy. The death angel had been commanded to take Jesus from me, to leave me in hell. God convinced me that he was going to leave me there. 
And as I heard my mother's wailing cry, and as Jesus was moaning and interceding and high priesting for my soul, begging God not to separate me and leave me there, my mama's cry went in with the Lord Jesus that was crying out to the Father. It went through all heaven and all heaven stood still as I heard my mother's wailing cry that as children grew up hearing our lives. Oh, and it went straight to the throne of God and the death angel's keys were so close that they were touching and they were moving like they were in the air. The keys were touching the top of my head. But as mama's cry went in with Jesus' cry and pierced the heart of God, those keys come to halt. They stayed the death angel through prayer and travail God spared my life and I found myself back in this world back with one more chance to crawl under my cross and pick up my Bible and I had to shout it to the world how God has judged my life but if my going if I'm going and sharing and tell my testimony if I save one soul from being separated from God and cast to the lake of fire that I saw out there it's worth all the names you want to call me hallelujah hallelujah this is the day of salvation don't put it off till tomorrow you never know when your last breath is your age is no security God's snapping the youth out every day by the hundreds throughout the world. The only security we have is in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Knowing you have him in your life, that's your security in this world. Would you stand with me? I went to a full gospel businessmen's meeting. And the doctor Zorby that was over me, God put a spirit-filled Catholic doctor. I was still in the cast. They put me in that when I was out in a coma. So no doctor in Reading could take me out till three solid months. So I went in the, the big room that night of the full gospel. And Dr. Zorby spotted me. I looked like a moon person and all this gear in my head. And he had me stand when the service started. He said, for those that's never seen or known a miracle, there stands a living, breathing, walking miracle. Said she should have never, never lived. If I'd have lived, I should have been a complete vegetable. My neck was broken in the most serious marrow of the bone, besides four major breaks down my spine. I would have never walked again. He said, she is a miracle. But said her mother stood over her like an iron mountain and would not turn loose to God till God brought her through. The faith of my mama and the cry that pierced the heart of God and God gave me mercy and grace and I can say and stand here my feet has walked in the pits of hell. I've been there. It's real. Just as you think heaven's real, so is hell. And you must choose now. Choose now. Where are you going to spend eternity? Get your eyes locked on the second death. You may live to be a million years in this old life. You think you've lived there living hell. It can't be compared to eternity. We just begin to live when we die the first death. Let God have your lives when you're young, as I did, and hang in there and do what God's called you to do. Pick up your cross and say, Father, I'll obey the call of God and I'll do what you've chosen for my life. If you pick the calling and the ministry first, then God will bring you the one that he's had ordained for you to walk with. He'll give you that one in your life. Hallelujah, that he has chosen. Don't make a mess of your life as I did and keep running till God. What a shame at 40 years old.
back into heavy drugs and alcohol worse than I'd ever been I should have been under the under the cross and carrying and doing my ministry already but God had to kill me break my neck let me die four minutes and take me to hell and back before he conquered my life oh hear me tonight young people don't keep running from the call of God and as I stood there crying God let me hear all the souls in hell one more time how they'd give anything in this world to be me I still had my feet I still had what voice was left oh, I still had another chance to answer the call of God upon my life and every soul in this hell, in hell would give anything in the world to be you give anything in the world to be in your place that they may have this life but it's too late so don't keep running from the call of God tonight the first course they started singing that touched my ears was the most beautiful words I thought I ever heard was because he lives in the key of C son because Jesus lives I was alive I was living hallelujah because he lives I don't have to try to slice my wrist I don't have to destroy myself because Jesus lives we live with him oh hallelujah hallelujah sing that course with me because he lives and all over the building I want you to start coming your calling is without repentance and God will hold you accounted for hallelujah you've been predestined from your mother's womb I want you to move out and come down I'd love to lay my hands on each and every one of you tonight God's got special calls special ministries you can have and he needs you now young people don't keep running as I did this gift of life is free and Jesus offers it to you tonight all over the building if you don't know Jesus step out and come down step out he's tugging at your heart don't go out of the building if you're not sure of your relationship with Jesus Christ if God stopped your heart what would it be would it be heaven or would it be hell the hell that I experienced out there